Hey everyone, welcome back to the landslide series and we are going into the next exercise in the sequence. The first two exercises we put out after kind of the main sequence where I teach the song and the solo and everything are really focused on getting you comfortable improvising sort of in the open position with your with your right hand in kind of a fixed position on the strings and with you basically playing open position chords. Something sounds sort of like this. You can see my hands are pretty much down here in the open position with the chords. My right hand has pretty much got my these fingers fixed on the thin strings and that bouncing around. And we're playing sort of, you know, things that are mostly in the eighths, eh, mostly eighths and sixteenths notes, but nothing like really, really fast or flashy. The next thing we're going to start to mess with is how to start to, you know, do things where the notes move a bit. <laughs> being able to move up into the upper areas of the neck, but mostly the first thing I'm going to get through before I get that is how to get your right hand comfortable crossing the strings to play scalar passages, because that's quite tricky. There's a good number of um, combinations of string crossings you have to work out before you're good at doing that. So I'm going to give you exercises that I think will make it as easy as possible, and we'll open up some nice musical possibilities along the way, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud of this sequence. I think you'll have a lot of fun working on it, so let me crash into it. The first thing that you really want to get down before doing this, and if you've played, if you've ever like worked on anything like Robert Johnson or any kind of early blues players, some of this might make sense to you. Um, Travis picking improvisation is greatly complexified by all the things that the thumb could be doing. You know, when the thumb's bouncing around, you're trying to like see where the, all the places the thumb could bounce to and then trying to have the fingers play against that, it's quite complicated. Um, so to start out, we want to simplify it as much as we can. You know, we want to just have the thumb playing one string. reminds me of the way uh, Stephen Stills would play Treetop Flyer. Um, it's very much like that. Um, so uh, what this does for you is this frees your left hand up to you know move a little faster and get a little bit more comfortable with scales while your right hand is doing you know two things at once. But you're also um, you're also just this is going to give you a little bit more time to get used to the string crossings that you're doing playing scales. So what we're going to start out with is just, if you don't know this before, if you haven't seen any lessons or any of my lessons particularly on how to play, you know, just, you know, basic scale boxes, what we really want to know is what I would call, you know, the Locrian scale box. I mean, other people will call it different things, but, you know, if, if think if you learn to play a major scale, you'd learn it, uh, it would look something like this, right down here in this open position. I tend to call that the Locrian box because it kind of starts on what would be the Locrian note of a major scale. Um, so make sure you know that. Find a lesson on it somewhere. I have lessons on it. Use them. Um, so make sure you can play that. And once you've got that down, just think of your thumb as kind of bouncing down here on the low E string. Sometimes I'll kind of palm mute this, but you can also play this open too. It doesn't really matter. So thumbs on the E string. So that string's kind of busy, as it were. We can't really do too much with it melody-wise or we can, but I'll show you how to later. For now, it's out. We can't use it. So that means we can play scales on... Any of these strings are game still. So you see what I did there is I've got the thumb going, but I played what's left of that scale over the rest of the strings that were available. So, so what you want to do is... Um, build into this very slowly. First of all, just get your thumb going. I'd use it in a pulse like this. One, two, three, four. I would call this kind of an eighth note pulse, and we're moving towards playing a sixteenth note scale over this, but first we're just going to play really slow. We're going to just play, you know, pointer finger on everything. Just 
just make sure the hands are coordinating together. You can switch to another finger if you feel that wouldn't stretch you too much. I'm going to switch to the middle and then the ring up here. And of course you come down back all the way down to here. So that's pretty simple. What we got to get it towards is walking the fingers. So very slowly, you, know, you really want to do this by touch more than anything. You want to just start with the pointer finger and strictly alternate. Pointer, middle, pointer, middle, pointer, middle. Thumbs going in the eighth notes, but definitely slow it down when you first do this. Two, three, four. Pointer, middle, pointer, middle, pointer, middle. You, know, you really want to walk through the scale very, very slowly and make sure you're strictly alternating. And in fact, do it in little pieces. You see, even I kind of made a mistake there while I was doing that. If you find you're making a mistake in an area of the scale, you want to focus on just there. That was just, for me, it was between the A and the D string. You know, I want to make sure I get that string crossing the same every time. So I'm just going to focus on... Yeah, I even got a wrong note there. So you see, I could spend some time just on these two strings here, just making sure I get a really consistent... I'm very aware when I cross the string, it's my middle finger that's going across. So I'm really trying to make that crossing work. Pointer, middle, pointer, middle, pointer, middle, and then back down. Pointer, middle, pointer, middle, pointer. And then, you know, right now I'm playing all my fingers kind of with the thumb, but you can also play them kind of alternating between the thumb. case is a little trickier, but you're going to get there eventually. For now, you know, whatever you need to do to kind of get used to having a very strict alternation of these fingers, a couple strings at a time, that's what you want to do. You want to do it, you know, two strings at a time. When you feel you got that down, don't want to kind of double up on two fingers in a row because if you get in the habit of doing that it will it will really really hamper you when you try to go faster you can't really be doubling up on fingers you need to, the strict alternation to kind of keep your muscles as fresh as possible so once you sort of got that down you want to get a metronome going at a speed you can do I'll just kind of take it at a tempo I like so I can kind of show you what we're doing and then right with the thumb you want to Just try to do the whole scale up to the top, right back to the bottom, without stopping the thumb. And you're starting the, and where you start it is really key. For now, I want you to make sure that whatever you do, the pointer finger is the leading finger, and th and it starts right with the thumb. It's kind of a pinch on the first note. You start right with that. Uh. Because you're going to see that. Um, different combinations of fingerings, you know, require a different practice. So after you've kind of got that down, after you've kind of gone back and forth between doing just a couple strings at a time and then trying to do that whole, you know, you know, between doing just two strings at a time and doing the whole scale, once you're comfortable with doing the whole scale, starting with the pointer finger and the thumb together, then phase shift at one eighth note later. Still starting with the pointer finger, but now it's starting on the beat after the thumb. So it's kind of between thumb strokes. So if the thumb's going, see the pointer finger would start right between the thumb and it sounds. And you can expect that to trip you up because now your brain is kind of in a whole new set of situations. It seems very similar, but to your brain, it's not necessarily going to be similar. I mean, if you can find a way to work it out, you know, on the first shot, power to you. If you have trouble with it, go back to just what you were doing. Just do it a couple strings at a time. Starting with the pointer finger kind of between the thumb strokes. Ba -da -da. Two strings. Now, of 
course, I've done this a bunch of times, so I'm kind of getting through them, you know, fairly quickly. But, you know, when you first do this, you can expect it to take time. It might take a couple days or a couple weeks or however, however long it takes. It depends on how many really focused hours you put in on it. But you can expect it to take you a little bit of time to work through each one of these steps. But if you work them out, it's going to make everything else after this make so much more sense. So... The last thing you want to do when you're pretty comfortable playing, you know, with the pointer finger leading both in unison with the thumb and the beat after it, switch to the middle finger leading, same thing, middle finger starts. You'll find it sounds exactly the same, but it feels totally different and offbeat with the middle finger leading. So that was, you know, there's four ways to do that with the thumb pulsing on eighth notes. Pointer finger leads right with the thumb, pointer finger leads right after the thumb, and then middle finger leads right with the thumb, and then middle finger leads right after the thumb. Four different combinations of playing that whole scale with the thumb pulsing on eighth notes and walking the fingers, strict alternation. So when you're doing this, this exercise at that level of combinations, you really want to use a mirror. A mirror is very important. One, you want to be watching your fingers to make sure they're alternating strictly. And you also want to be watching the angle of your hand because the angle at which you are playing these different uh, strokes is going to affect the sound a lot. And you know, while you're kind of polishing this exercise at this phase, you don't want to you know, have the fingers be you know, tilting in a way that you don't like that doesn't sound very good, or the thumb is like playing, like scraping across the strings like this, and you're getting a lot of scrapey sounds like that. You want to make sure you can watch um, what your hand is doing. And what I tend to do is I tend to watch for, I'll sort of hook my thumb a little bit like this so that I try to get my pick to go a little bit more straight across the strings, a little more flat, rather than kind of like, if I go at an angle, oftentimes I'll get a scrape, like this way or that way. I don't really like that, so I try to turn my thumb a bit like that so that this kind of goes parallel across the strings. And I'll also turn my wrist a little bit this way so that I'm crossing the strings at an angle more this way than this way. With classical guitar, a lot of times you want to you know, have an attack that's a little bit like this to kind of mellow out the sound. But because I'm crossing a steel guitar, um, I don't, one, I don't want to wear out my nails in the same way. I want to wear them out kind of evenly rather than have like a little gouge over here. And I also want to make sure that I'm not, you know, playing across the windings like that. You can hear there's a little bit of scrape there. If I turn, you don't hear the scrape anymore. So I kind of turn this a little bit this way to make sure that my fingers are playing straight across the strings and then I'll hook my thumb a little bit like that, mostly to kind of get rid of extra string noise. And you really want to be watching in a mirror to get those things down because that will, that will improve the sound of this a lot. And that's really a foundational thing to get ready to do because if, if, if your hand position doesn't sound very good while you're playing the scale exercise, you know, you'll, you'll be able to play all this flashy stuff later, but it all sound really messy. And it, it ends up being really all for naught because the, especially with the songs, you really want it to be pretty, you know. That's, that's what I really shoot for with it. I think pretty really works for this. So, all right, where does that leave us? That leaves us, mm, there's one more sort of slightly more advanced uh, way to do this exercise. One more level I try to take it to. Um, if you get up to this point with this exercise, you're doing great. You could probably move on to other things. I tend to like to try to like pull everything I can out of every exercise. So, you know, what I'll do is, you know, I'll keep doing this thumb. I'll move the thumb back to doing quarter notes. So if before I was playing one, two, three, four, one, now I'm going to, uh, See, what happens is, I think you see what I'm doing there. I'm basically, you know, playing the thumb half as much, but also still kind of phase shifting the scale and then alternating which finger leads. Same sort of idea. Because there are, there's more space between the thumb strokes, there's more possible finger combinations. It don't, when you're doing this, with thumbs pulsing like this, there's a more limited number of relationships the fingers can have to the thumb. The question is, you know, is the thumb kind of, you know, starting with the finger or not with the finger? I mean, that's really kind of all there is. When you've got this much bigger space between the thumb strokes, the thumb stroke falls in a more limited number of places in the scale, but you being able to feel where those are is really critical. If you're going to improvise using a slower thumb pulse, which, you know, in a lot of songs I will, um, then that's an important feel to get. So now you end up doing the same exercise, but you have to do it with four displacements of the scale rather than just two. You have to start, you know, right with the thumb. Right after the thumb.
Um, two beats after the thumb. after the thumb. One. Ah, see, I'm getting a little messy on that one there too. And you see, they're not all the same. They don't all feel exactly equivalent. And if I don't kind of polish those every day, that technique gets a little sloppy. And then if I try to improvise kind of in that world of technique, I'm a lot more likely to screw it up. So, you know, this is kind of the approach I take. Yeah, I try to cover as many possibilities as I can think of so that when I, when I really, my, when my mind wants to go wacky places, my hands already know how to do it. So again, same principles. You want to displace the scale. You want to switch which finger you lead with. If you really want to get wacky, you can like try, you know, playing different finger combinations, you know, your, your pinky and your, uh, ring finger, your ring finger and your middle finger, you can use your you know, your pointer finger and your pinky, any of that stuff. I don't really do any of that, but I can think of good reasons to do it if you really wanted to. Uh, and there was one other thing I wanted to cover in this, and that is, yes, moving the thumb. Moving the thumb is also a possibility, um, and this will give you a sense of different, you know, kind of contractions of the right hand. You can do all that stuff... just the E string, obviously you can just go up to the A string. Up to the D string. And I feel like after this they stop sounding like bass strings, but you know, I mean you can also. So pulsing on the G string can lead to some cool musical things. I mean, that's, I haven't really, I haven't used that yet for anything. Maybe you will. Um, but the point is, you can move the thumb to different strings. It's going to lead to different things. So I highly recommend you practice that as well if you are feeling adventurous. And uh, yeah, I think that about covers it for what I like to do with open string scales, at least for this song. That kind of covers the scope of everything I do with Landslide. Obviously, you can also you know play any other type of scale you want with this. Um, you can find other rhythmic combinations. You can find ways to work other meters in. But this, 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 that's kind of the scope of what I do when I'm working on landslide stuff. Next thing we're going to do in this series is we're going to go over another uh, string crossing exercise that really focuses on kind of all the string crossing possibilities kind of packed into a very narrow area to really, really improve your ability to do uh, string crossings with 16th notes. So it's getting intense, guys. Bear with me as much as you can. It's a heck of a ride. So see you for the next lesson. Take it easy. Have fun with the guitar. It's good stuff.